So last time I graded an ad in Resolve showing you the full workflow. This time I'll grade the same ad in Premiere Pro and let's see if it's slower or faster. We are color grading a one minute long ad from a subscriber to the channel, this guy. We'll be using Academy color encoding system to speed up our grade and we need a colorist, me. So in Resolve it took us 30 minutes to finish the project and let's set the timer and see if Premiere will win or lose. Let's start now. First we import the flat fast edit to Premiere Pro. Here we bump into our first issue. The codec the video is delivered to us is really slow. It takes 10 seconds to just change a frame. So let's transcode this to a more usable codec. The codec I recommend is DNXHRHQX 10 bit. This is pretty much the only codec that I found in Premiere that preserves the footage in 10 bit. And we need 10 bit for sure. ProRes, for example, almost always, at least on my experience, ends up being 8 bit, for example. I guess there's some kind of bug in Premiere. But anyway, so click render at maximum depth and uh, then as well import to project and then export. This will take some of our time, but we will save it back manifold when our footage plays back better. Okay, let's replace the footage on the timeline and let's cut it into individual clips with the scene edit detection tool. That will do the work for us. Let's add an adjustment layer on top of all of the clips. I'm excluding the logo at the end of the video. We don't want to color grade that. We have these black bars on the sides of the, our video, so let's crop these off. I'll change the se sequence re resolution from 4K to UHD. Next, let's choose a hero shot. One shot that we will match all others to. This one. And let's change the label color to mango, for example. Let's copy the time code to the comparison view for later use. Okay, so now we have our setup ready. We, when we want to affect all of our clips, we add an effect on the adjustment layer. And if we want to fix individual clips, we work on the individual clip. So the very first thing that I want to do is to transform all of our clips into Aces CCT color space. To do that, this accurately, I'm using my own Aces Lite LUT kit that has plethora of input device transforms for almost all of the at least half decent video cameras on the market. So let's transform our footage to Aces CCT now. The footage was shot all with the same and one camera, one and the same camera, A7S3 and with S-Log3 and S-Gamut Cine profile. So I'll use this LUT. Let's rename the Lumetri effect to, to Aces CCT for clarity. Then I will copy the effect to all of the clips we are uh, going to edit. If you have multiple cameras on your project, you need to use different input device transform for each camera model. So they all will end up looking the same in Aces. But we will manage with just one. Now I want to transform our footage into Rex 109 color space so it's ready for internet delivery. We could as easily transform our footage to be displayed on an HDR television, but I'll cover that later on in a different tutorial. So in the se second folder in my LUT library, we can find Rex 109 transforms. Let's first try the official ACES to Rex 109 transform. I think it burns the highlights bit too much, so let's try this one. This is made with the official ARRI lock to Rex 709 LUT. So this has a bit of that ARRI magic in it, I guess. But anyway, um, this owes us more of the highlights, but let's try this low contrast LUT as well. And we can see even more color in the highlights. But the footage is clipping on the highlights. So let's return to the ARRI LUT because it has such a nice highlight roll off. Overall, the clips have a different exposure and white balance. The clips in the end of are darker and blue, but most of the clips are a bit bright and a bit cool. The image is a bit flat, so I think I'll, I want to add some contrast of, uh, to all of these clips. By the way, the re let's rename the Lumetri effect to Rec 709, again for clarity. To add contrast, I open the Curves tool in Lumetri effect and add some. It looks good. Then I want to work with the white balance and exposure of all of the clips at once. I'm adding an old effect called Fast Color Corrector to the adjustment layer. The reason I use this is that this is the only tool in Premiere Pro that has an offset wheel, like, like this one, allowing us to work with white balance and uh, like it would be raw, if you're, like, like your footage would be raw, even if your footage is not raw. And this tool has lift, gamma and gain tools to work with exposure like raw, even if the footage is not raw. This is thanks to the power of ACS Lite and ACS CCT color space. I'm placing it before the Rex 709 transform so that the effect happens in ACS CCT color space before the Rex 709 transform. Let's rename this global white balance exposure. 
I lower the gain to make this white balance circle less sensitive because we just want to affect the white balance slightly. And I'll push all of the clips a bit warmer. I'll make everything a bit darker as well. I won't explain these sliders now, but in the end of the video I'll show you how you can learn more about this tool and AC Slide in general. So next let's make our footage look like it was shot on an analog film. I'm adding a film emulation LUT in my AC LUT kit. Uh, I have a folder full of different kind of film emulation LUTs. I'm choosing this one and lowering the strength to 50% and this, this looks better. Let's start to work with individual clips, exposure and white balance and let's match these together. To do this I'll add the same fast color character effect to the first clip and rename it to clip white balance and exposure. Now because this is on the clip and not on the adjustment layer uh, it will only affect the individual clip that it's on. So let's lower the gain to 5 and copy the effect to all of the other clips as well. I'll open the comparison view and I'll start matching all of these clips to the hero clip. I'll lift the uh, shadows with the lift and lower the highlights with the gain, softening the, look, uh, the image, because this clip has much dynamic range in the scene. Then I'll tweak the white balance a tiny bit warmer and this is so simple and easy now because the main grade is done and now I only need to match the white balance and exposure of each clip and with the help of AC Slide it's really easy, like working with RAW. These later clips have a very off white balance and exposure but just see how well we can fix them. Just like RAW, you, you just can't do this with conventional color grading methods. And hey, I can see that a lot of you guys are not subscribed to my channel. Well, you know, subscribing to my channel is actually free. It will help me a lot. So if you find my content helpful, you can consider subscribing and you can always change your mind later. Thanks. Okay, we are almost done. I want to see how the video will look after I upload it to YouTube. To do that, I'm adding an adjustment layer on top of all of the clips and I will apply a special LUT from the Color Monitoring folder in my LUT kit DCI P3 Direct 709 monitoring light. This will show me very accurately how the video will end up looking after I publish it to YouTube. Based on, uh, on this, I'll watch the video through and see how the clips match together. I'll tweak a few of the shots and uh, the look overall. And now it's time to render. Remember to turn off the YouTube monitoring light, by the way. The rendering takes about three minutes, which is quite okay for this is a 4K resolution and my Mac is Mac, a MacBook is a bit old already. And done. It took us a bit less than 24 minutes, if you even count the time we waited for videos to transcode and render. So actually less than 20 minutes of work to create a full ad. Here you can see the end result of this video and when you want to learn more about this color grading method that we used, you should watch this video where I explain how this all works. Or then you can go to my free training called Introduction to Advanced Color Grading. In the training you will learn how to use the same color grading system as they use in Hollywood and Netflix to color grade your footage as well. You'll learn this very same workflow as we used in this tutorial, so choose now.